Welcome back to the Alts Podcast. I'm your host, Horatio Ruiz. We bring you industry leaders and creators to give their insights on the rapidly changing and exciting world of alternative assets. Opinions expressed on this podcast by the host and podcast guests are for informational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. Podcast hosts and guests may maintain positions in the offerings discussed in this podcast. The intro song, Fishing for Pets, is written and composed by Alan Goldscher from his latest release, Live at the Lakeview Lounge. Thank you for joining the Alts Podcast. Our guest today is Anthony Hayes, an award-winning actor, director, writer, and producer. His latest feature film, Gold, starring Zac Efron and Anthony, is out now and available on major streaming platforms. Anthony is also the creator of Retrogression, a movie franchise starting from script by incorporating the blockchain. Anthony is looking to disrupt the way movies are financed and the way creatives are compensated by turning to the blockchain and using the cryptocurrency RTGN, which he created to help finance retrogression. In our conversation, we do a deep dive on the movie industry's financial models, why Anthony is looking to change business as usual, and the plans he has for retrogression as a movie franchise, and an experiential form of entertainment and investment. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Anthony Hayes. All right, guys. So we're very fortunate today. Uh, we have a special guest, uh, Anthony Hayes. He's uh, an award-winning actor, uh, writer, director. Uh, just recently came out with with a movie with Zac Efron uh, called Gold. Uh, highly recommend you guys watch that. Uh, Anthony, thanks for joining the podcast. No, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's um, you know, I know Stefan contacted you, and yep. uh, he was such a big fan of the movie. He was a huge fan of the uh, of movie. He actually was explaining to me how this all went down. And he was just like, I liked it so much, I got I had to reach out to him. <laughs> That's, him how much fantastic. Him to That's great. Yeah, yeah, and and then and then uh, and then you you messaged back and talked a little bit about kind of what what else you were working on. And he was like, man, that's like right up our pipeline, right? Like we talk a lot about uh, NFTs yeah. and crypto. And uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to go delve into that and, and talk about what, what, what retrogression is. Um, but first, if you don't mind, I was, I was hoping that we could talk about gold. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It was, uh, re- you know, released. Um, I don't want to give away too much about it, but it's kind of takes place in the future, kind of like this dystopian future. Um uh, some dark themes there for sure. Yeah. Um, but just wanted to get your take on it. What, what was, what was the central theme in the movie? Um, and, and, and how did you, what was your inspiration behind it? Yeah, sure. It was, um, you, you're right. It's a, it's a, it's a bleak view of where humanity could go if it doesn't, uh, uh, re recalibrate what's important in life. Um, and so the film, uh, primarily is the theme is around greed and is about, um, us valuing things more than human interaction, um, more than relationships, and more than building relationships, and it's essentially a it's you know it's a it's a futuristic uh, thriller with Zac Efron as the lead, and a very economical film, very simple, uh, deliberately engineered to have very little dialogue um, and play more heavily on themes and survival because it's a survival movie. And it's just basically about uh, Zac Efron comes to this place in the middle of the middle of nowhere. You don't know where it's set. You don't know when it's set, but you know it's sometime in the future. And uh, there's been some civil unrest. There's been um, Bitcoin I th- I is trading at one point two million dollars in the on the radio scene. I've got there, um, and so it's some, somewhere in the future. And um, he comes to this place to get a ride to a place called the Compound, which is meant to be this. Um, this uh, you know promised land for opportunity and 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 wealth and and prosperity because the uh, human race has basically turned on each other. Global warming has has decimated the planet. Um, and uh, he meets me, and then on the way to the compound, we discover this massive chunk of gold accidentally. Um, and then we uh, devise a plan where I go and get an excavator because it's too uh, big to pull out of the ground with the truck we have, and he stays behind and guards the gold. And then the, the, the entirety of the rest of the movie plays out on one patch of dirt, and it's about the lengths that humans will go to to secure themselves a fortune um, and about what greed does to someone, you know, how it changes your personality and um 
so it's yeah it's a fun film it's a great thing for efron it's something he's never really done before um uh, really gritty really um uh dark parable really about the human condition yeah. it, it real quick i mean it reminded me of an episode i watched a long time ago when i was younger of the twilight zone um yeah there's a guy who was in the desert with a bunch of gold bars you know and and he was <laughs> he, he he had he you know he, he basically died with the gold bars he had nowhere to go but it was that that same you know idea of what are you what are you going to do with a bunch of gold in the middle of nowhere you know? yeah exactly right there's another film that was an inspiration uh years ago called the treasure of the sierra madre and uh that was all about gold prospecting as well with uh humphrey bogart and that's another one that's kind of in this you know town where everyone's obsessed with you know it's it's economically poor and everyone's obsessed with gold and then you know they at the end of that film they kind of die trying to get the gold and end up with nothing so it's you know it's a parable about similar kind of themes to to gold and gold's got a a a pretty uh you know full-on ending as well yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) um (laughs) for sure and uh, we don't we don't want to give that away no Um, we don't we don't yeah, I was I was watching the first thing I did when I watched trails. Like, how is this gonna end? And uh, you know, <laughs> but, but so you know, I was like, did you make it out? Um, yeah, anyway, but... um, uh, this was your first uh, director's credit. Um, uh, you have a, a couple of films to your credit. Uh, it was your first director's credit since two thousand eight. Um, obviously, you've been very active uh, in with acting. Yeah. Um, how come it was? How come you had that? That those there was like that fourteen year gap. Uh, between yeah, it's your, a long time. Between, uh, yeah, well, could you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, part of the reason is that my acting career kind of took off, and you know, I was around the world and doing films with Brad Pitt and things like that. Really great productions <laughs> that came up that kept me busy and um, and Small traveling. Things. You know, which is nice. And another part of it is the is that the financing. Um, the financing model for films is notoriously a very difficult one. It's a difficult one to uh, hold on to the to the ownership of your your film and the IP of your film, um, and it's difficult to make any sort of money out of it. So filmmakers essentially have to go around cap in hand every time they do um, another another project. Um, also, the timing had to be right for me. I wanted to. You know, the first film I did was quite a low budget film. It was only one point two million for the entire budget of the film. I didn't want to do that again, so I wanted to um, do a film that could attract an A list, an A list actor, and go up a rung in terms of my career. Um, and I also almost got a, uh, I had a film, another film up, which had a, a whole huge cast of um, actors in it in about two years before Gold. And uh, we got five weeks into pre-production and then the financing fell out from the people that were promising the finance and then the entire film fell over and I was kind of in Vancouver for weeks, had done all the prep work on it and, you know, we'd spent $1.3 million on pre-production and then it just, the, the finance fell out. And so that was a, it was a really devastating blow, that one. And it was part of... Um, the process of me trying to work out a way that, you know, you could finance a film on a different model and have more control and ownership of the film and bring the finance yourself to the, to the, uh, to the production to make sure that these things didn't happen. Cause it happens to a lot of people. A lot of films get up and money falls out at the last minute. And it's also then reliant on a lot of different things. It's reliant on uh, pre-sales all around the world. Every actor has essentially, a, um, a price tag on their head in the film industry and that price tag can vary you could be talking about a certain actor and you know today they're they're worth you know a five hundred thousand dollar sale in germany or this in you know switzerland or this in asia or, you know and that's the way you kind of cobble all this finance together for films is pre-sales or uh or bank loans on pre-sales for films and so your actor um, over the course of, say, the two years that you're financing the film could have a hit and be worth a fortune and then have two bad films that they considered have not done great box office and then all of a sudden their value just plummets. And so along with that plummeting value of the exact same actor you've had that, are, you know, and that could, that could even be an Al Pacino or someone that's really huge. It's like one minute he's worth his weight in gold, the next minute he's worth nothing because of one bad film that didn't do well for certain companies. So there's this whole puzzle that's involved in it. And it's, um, 
you know, one, it takes away the creativity of casting and being able to cast who you want, who's perfect for the role, and puts a lot of uh, constraints on on directors to to have to cast certain people that may not be right for it. But also, it just means that the financing takes such a long time because of the ebbs and flows of the value of this cast. And so, the one that I had in Vancouver was an ensemble cast and and had about six lead actors in it. And so, getting all those six lead actors with that price tag to match the budget of the film was just this house of cards that if one thing didn't work or one actor had a bomb or one bit of finance didn't come through, then the whole thing collapses. And so it's just a, in, if you're outside the studio system, obviously that's a different, um, a different place, but if you're an independent filmmaker, then that's kind of what you're dealing with and why there are gaps for, for most indie filmmakers of at least five years between movies is is because the, you're reliant on the marketplace, you're reliant on the pre-sales, you're reliant on the on the sales agents and how they value and different sales agents value different actors, you know. So it's this whole um, it's this whole kind of false economy that's always changing, and you're always trying to play catch up. Um, so there had to be a better way, you know. And I guess that that's what we'll talk about in in this as well as you know. Yeah. Um, why I did retrogression, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, that, that is that is you know what, what you just talked about. I mean, you don't you don't really hear about that. You know, you don't hear about the uh, the projects that don't get made and the, yeah. the work that goes into it, right? Yeah, that's the work right. that you had to, like you said, assemble that that that, that cast. Um, wow, yeah. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I can see that, why. I mean, maybe even with that project, we had we had Joel Edgerton, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Numi Rapace, John Bernthal. You know, we had this huge you know slate of actors in there all international actors and it just it wasn't enough it wasn't enough to um and the reason it, it is that way is because you know you look at them profit participation of a film and so for instance for every dollar that a film makes at the cinema 60 cents of the dollar goes to the cinema chain and of the other 40 cents 50 percent of that goes to the distributor and then of that, uh, the fifty percent of the forty cents that's left, then it goes thirty-three percent of that goes to a sales agent. Then they recoup their costs and their marketing budgets and their trips to Cannes and all those sort of things. And then it goes to the people who actually invested in the film to recover their finance. And then if there's anything left, which there never is, then it goes to the filmmakers. And so the filmmakers, the creators, uh, are the last people to get you know financially rewarded for their content. And so, you know, this is why we've seen an explosion in Netflix over the last 10 years, why you get people like Scorsese and all these guys, these big directors coming to it, because the way Netflix came along and said, okay, well, forget about all these people in the middle that are taking a piece of the pie so that you're never getting any any royalties from your film or any, you know, any anything in the waterfall of your film. What we're going to do is we're going to you submit your budget and how much you want to get paid, and then we're going to pay you a premium on top of that. So Netflix will go, this is it costs ten million for this film. We'll give you the ten million, and then we'll negotiate a premium. So let's give you another five. So then the filmmakers in Netflix are now able to just bank that money straight away and just go, great. So I've got five million, but the problem with Netflix is that they own it in perpetuity for eternity, and so there's never any more revenue stream for. Um, for a film, it just stops with Netflix with that one deal. And so on one hand, it's great because mm. the filmmakers get money and then they can put that into developing the next project and then, you know, um, and making that and bringing some finance to the table themselves. But on the other hand, a life cycle of a film's profits is about 25 to 30 years generally. Um, now, when that when that's carved up the way it is in the, the financing model we have now, everyone's making money for 25 years apart from the originators of the content. So <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah, and then right. Netflix Netflix wow. does the opposite and goes, we'll pay you money now, but there's no 25 years of profit coming. So to bring crypto together with the film industry um, and to, to build this retrogression project was a way to, A, control the finance so that it didn't fall out, B, to, to engage a community to be able to raise that finance to make a film and and incentivize the community by giving back to them give them a piece of the of the of the profit of the film as well and then not be beholden to all these middlemen you can go direct to market you can you know maintain your higher up in the waterfall so there's a lot of reasons kind of fiscally and creatively why there needs to be a shift and so netflix you know 
changed the whole landscape of film finance. There's no doubt about it. But I think there's another step to go, and I think it's crypto and film. So, so let's talk about that for anybody maybe that's uh, mm -hmm. not familiar. So, Retrogression is your your uh, next project, and it's basically um, your film that you are starting from the ground up on the blockchain uh, using cryptocurrency from the very beginning. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you had a you had a presale as well um, to kind of help you know like launch it, launch the coin. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of moving parts. We talked about this a little bit before, um, but what exactly is what is retrogression? Okay, and 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 how is it going to be different from anything that's been out there? Yeah, sure. So retrogression is an entertainment ecosystem essentially that's uh, that not only has its foot in uh, in film, but also in the play to earn gaming space and also in the streaming the streaming services space. So. The, the, the end goal of Retrogression is to make a trilogy of sci-fi films, which I'll, I will direct, and we've written the first instalment of that um, of that trilogy already. Um, and the taxes, the buy-sell taxes from um, trading the token will go towards financing the, the film eventually, but that's, that's the long-term um, aspect of it. And then um, anyone who holds the tokens will participate in the profit share higher up in the waterfall of you know what the films make in in terms of um in terms of revenue um but obviously that's a really long-term plan and there's been a lot of uh people in the film space that have tried to to meld film and and crypto together and it's always been a bit of an afterthought and that's why it, it kind of have it hasn't integrated it hasn't developed a community and incentivized that community all the way through that people have either gone great i'm gonna you know raise money for a film and it's essentially just a cash grab you know that they're getting people to pay for their movie um or it's been you know let's develop a whole bunch of nfts after the fact that aren't actually integrated into an ecosystem and so what we did is we wrote a screenplay that um, was designed to incorporate elements of crypto all the way through it from the from the scripting stage. So, for instance, um, there's a character in there that is obsessed with uh, virtual horse racing. So then we would have a virtual horse racing mini game uh, in our metaverse, which I'll talk more about in a in a minute. Um, and then there's a, on the TV in the back of the uh, on back of one of the scenes, there's a virtual NBA basketball league because it's set in the future and they're all virtual athletes. And so you would have a basketball mini game within your ecosystem that is play to earn that will mint NFT collector cards based on these characters that are the players in the in the film. There's um, in the script, it's uh, set 350 years into the future after the decimation of the planet from global warming. And um, and the entire world's uh, economy, all currencies have been discontinued and everyone is functioning on the RTGM currency, which is a cryptocurrency. And so the way it works in the film is that it's, it, it's an incentivized um, system where you are awarded according to your carbon footprint. So the lower your carbon footprint is, the more RTGM tokens uh, the citizens receive. And so the, the guy at the center of it is Ben Hammond and he works on the blockchain and uh, he's invented this system. And there's a terrorist attack on this other island and all the seas, sea levels have risen and so it's the, all these floating metropolises that are, that are around and he gets called out for a terrorist attack. And then when he gets there, he realizes that his uh, system has been repurposed uh, unbeknownst to him and is controlling an entire slave trade that are uh, that are doing sand dredging, and they are uh, developing all these five-star energy-rated vacuum cleaners and dishwashers and all this kind of consumerism things that we we buy to service the one percent of the community back on the the richer islands that he's from, and so he has to you know join the resistance who we first thought were um, were terrorists, and then find out that they're actually uh, rebel uh, fighters and then take down the system that he created and liberate mankind. And so there's all these elements of blockchain throughout the film that then we can roll out and um, put into the real world. And so the play to earn game is a, is a heavily narrative story based game that is based on the story of the film. Um, and so you are a first person, Ben Hammond, that goes into this world. We're developing it on Unreal Engine. So it's gonna look really uh, amazing. It's a really high quality yeah. uh, game. I can't announce it today, but and I wish I could because this would be the perfect space. But we have a um, 
we have a partnership that we've inked with um, with one of the major players in the uh, NFT gaming space, and they've they've been around for quite a few years um, with their game, and they have just released or are releasing their their metaverse, and so we're an official uh, friend of their metaverse. So our play to earn game is being developed by them and their subsidiary companies. Um, to be built and they will house us on their multi-million dollar metaverse with our own world and essentially will be the the only entertainment film story based um, project on there so um, that's really exciting for us wow. because you know they've got a whole um, you know whole ecosystem themselves yeah. you know um, so yeah the game will play on that there'll be mini games within the games you can play it we're going to be minting nfts when you play that game and some of them will have be so rare that they unlock another level of the game that you can access mm -hmm. and only if you have that nft key can you play that next level of the game and then if you finish that level then you can sell it on the secondary market to another gamer who can then use that key and so everything's kind of integrated in an ecosystem um you know where People can make money off the secondary market. The NFTs have a use case. You know, they're not just random NFTs. They appear in the film, in the game. Um, and so that's the kind of tie-in with that. Um, and this is where it gets confusing because then we also, uh, on launch, we launched our um, our film streamer, which is a, an emerging uh, filmmaker's crib that's uh, populated with... Uh, a whole bunch of hand curated Oscar nominated and Oscar winning short films and Khan film festival winning films. And that's a, uh, those filmmakers enter their ERC 20 compatible wallet and we reward them with the RTGN token for streams. And so then we also do airdrops to the community for engaging in that platform. And so you're incentivizing the community to watch the films. You're then rewarding the filmmakers, which we hope to make relationships with, that then this becomes a DAO studio eventually where we, you know, uh, harness these relationships with emerging filmmakers and then have their films on our platform as we roll it out. So, um, yeah, the integration's kind of wild, you know, with this project. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it is because, like, so I'm, I'm trying to wrap it all together, right? I mean, you, have, <laughs> you, you have the movie, you know, but, but it was so, it was, it, it seems like, and I'm not being, you know, obviously it's obvious, like there was a lot of thought put into it. Yeah. Um, and you have to be very deliberate about why you're doing what you're doing. Right. Um, yeah. And like you said, you know, it's you're talking about utility. You're talking about, you know, tie-ins between the movie and, and the video game. And then you have your metaverse. So the metaverse is basically going to be the, a video game, right? Uh, where, you, where you get to play the video game. Yeah, you'll get to play the video game. I mean, once we can reveal what that metaverse is, there's a whole bunch of other aspects to that metaverse that um, mm -hmm. that you can do with your avatar in that thing. So, for instance, you know, costumes from the film can be put on your avatar. You can ink your avatars with, um, you know, our branding. Um, that avatar walks around our world so you can discover our, you know, post-apocalyptic or post um, uh what would you call climate disaster world and so yeah. that's all on 3d uh in 3d on the unreal engine and then a lot of our nfts for our second run will be um developed on that too and so that's also a cost cut cutting measure too because one of the major costs in doing a sci-fi film is the visual effects for the movie and so we're making careful with our planning that all the assets that we create for the game can then also be used in the film as well and therefore cutting down the budget of the film in the long run so there's a lot yeah. of pre-planning pre um, involved for sure for sure um so i guess i guess i have two questions and uh off of that and um the first question is kind of a bigger bigger kind of uh topic you know what inspired you to go blockchain um besides i know you talk about the the you know the difficulty with fill financing the how it is how things can fall through at the last minute um how uh, how much of a fan are you of of other cryptocurrencies is that something that you've kind of been exploring for a while now and yeah. the second question kind of coming behind that is how have you found so far the process of financing a film through you know through this method through a, a, a you know the rtgn token and through cryptocurrency and, and how you know is it a bigger challenge than traditional financing because it's it's like a, there's a steep learning curve yeah um but you feel you know so, so where are you at with that yeah, they're good questions. Um, 
I, I guess the, fir the first one is I've been dabbling in crypto for quite a few years now. I've learned the hard way, as a lot of people do, where you jump in and you yeah. have no idea what you're doing and you, you lose a shit yeah. ton of money. Um, and then you kind of, you know, learn how it, how it goes. I've been, you know, watching other projects on other blockchains as well. We're on the ETH uh, chain, um, you know, and there was a, at one stage we were thinking of going BSC Then we were watching a lot of projects with um, a lot of potential die really quickly because of just the way that space is, is, is at the moment. Um, yeah. And then fighting the noise of so many projects as well is another is is another issue. You know, there's just so much noise in in the crypto thing. How do you cut through that? And so, um, yeah, I've always had a big a big love for blockchain because it's the future, and it surprises me every day. There are so many projects that develop something, and I go, oh my God, that's just genius. And you hope that they manage to cut through the noise and 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 do it. And yeah. the great thing is, it's like they're like building blocks. If someone creates something, and then someone comes along and creates something on top of that, and on top of that, and it's just this big evolution of a massive community. Um, and you know, the world has tried to stop it, and it's just not. It's unstoppable. It's it's too much of a force. Um, and it's exciting. I find yeah. that kind of innovation really exciting. And, you know, there's innovation in film that I've always been interested in. And blockchain is another way to innovate film. And we're only just starting to, to you know, get to the tip of the iceberg of, of this, of how to integrate things that I love, which is film and storytelling, into into blockchain. It's it's quite incredible. And so even with our NFTs, it's the approach we want to take is, a you know, we're releasing our NFTs as a, as a treasure hunt, and it's a it's a narrative based story uh, treasure hunt that takes you through the world and the characters and the sides of the film and the game, so that you're learning um, in a narrative sense uh, the the story of our whole ecosystem at the same time as finding yeah. your NFTs and stuff. So I just love that. I love that integration. I think there's a there's a, a long way to go. Um, sure. So a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, us talking about NFTs, we'd be like, "What are you even?" Same, exactly. You know? Exactly. It gets and my now, mind. It gets my now, mind ticking over a lot. You know, like yeah. there's so much to take on, and it's about distilling so much information, and then you know, working out how to apply that practically. You know, and, and about finding the right teams to do that too. So, for instance, you know, this is a huge undertaking. The the retrogression project, yeah. and so it's not just me. You know, I have you know the partnership with the with the metaverse gaming company who I heavily rely on for their expertise because they're experts in the field and very successful, you yeah. know, they've got a subsidiary company that, um, that develops all the unreal engine, uh, assets and is, is involved in gaming and film already. So you've got those teams and they've got, you know, a team of a hundred devs and concept artists, you know, then I've got the streaming aspect. I've got a whole nother bunch of devs over this side that I work with to develop the streaming platform, which we're, now about to also release the ios and android app version of that uh as well so that's almost complete um and then you've got you've got the nft side of things and then you've got the film side of things with people working and branding it's it's crazy you know but that's that's kind of the background i come from with with filmmaking is that you bring 500 people together you everyone sees the how many names are in the credits of films and they all have different expertise and they're all great at what they do. And it's about bringing all those great minds together and, and making sure that everyone's on the same page and achieving the goals you want to achieve. And that's that's how you get these things done because it is a massive undertaking. But it's what I love is yeah. to surround myself by awesome people, you know. That's a good point. What you talk about the number of people that it takes anyway to, to create a, a film, it's you know, nuts. now. Yeah. Um, it's not. It is nuts. Um, yeah. If you ever, you know, passing by a, a scene where they're filming and you know, <laughs> yeah, that's and right. these double wide everywhere. And it's just like, where are all these people coming from? Um, yeah, it's not. I remember my, my dad's best mate always wanted to come on set. He used to hound me as since I was a kid going, I want to come on set. I want to come on set. And I was going, look, it's probably not what you think it is. And finally I got him onto the set and he stood there for about 10 minutes and goes, what are all these people actually doing? nothing happens. This is so boring. And I was like, I told you, that's yeah. what it seems like, you know? So, <laughs> and like film, it's all, you know, all, all the film is in the preparation. It's all the months before you start shooting where the serious heavy lifting is done, you know, and similar right. to, to any blockchain projects, it's all about development. I, you know, and, and I appreciate that, that the reply, 
how is though how is that financing? And I'm I'm wondering, are you is is retrogression going to be financed solely through uh, the the token, or do you feel like uh, you know there'll be like a you know you're going to rely on a little bit of the traditional financing along with with the with the RTGN token? Yeah, it's a great question. So. I, can, I bring 40% of the finance of the film to the table. And so that's in, um, in there's a government incentives, which is called a producer's offset in Australia. And so we'll shoot this in Australia. And so basically for every dollar you spend on services or crew or, you know, any anything to do with making a film, you get a 40% rebate back on that. So, you know, I bring that as an experienced filmmaker to the table. So 40% of the finance is locked in and then we raise the rest of it through the tokens. Now, you know, the, ideally you want to raise all the rest of it with, you know, in the community um, because then you're doing exactly what the plan is with this is to cut out all the middleman and all the slices of the pie and then funnel all the, the funds and the revenue back into the community as buybacks, redistribution, and therefore lifting the chart and, you know, rewarding the community for it. But there is also an avenue, and this is how it works in, in film finance, where you can sell off certain territories. So, you can just hand select them and you can go, okay, well, let's make a sale to Germany for a million dollars or let's make a sale to just France or let's make a sale to, you know, just this territory. And there's about 130 different territories around the world. So if it got to a point where we went, okay, where we need to go and sell off some of these territories, we can sell off just that specific territory direct to the distributor, therefore being high up in the, higher up in the waterfall, um, essentially the, 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 the way the kind of uh, the, the finance comes back down to the investors. And so we have a greater control over that and then a greater control over how we do it as well, um, which cuts, it cuts out a lot of financing fees, which can run into the millions. It's, um, it's a much better way to do it. Um, I mean, once, you know, the, the aim of this project is to, you know, I've obviously got Zac Efron in uh, gold and there's no point in going backwards from there for me as a filmmaker. So <laughs> I've got pretty pretty lofty ambitions on who I want to cast in this, you know, um, and it is A-list, you know, and use my contacts that I already have in um, from films I've done over the years. And if anyone researched me, you can see who I've worked with, some pretty big hitters there. Um, yeah. And to, you know, get these guys involved. I mean, obviously with a community and with a chart is that obviously as this kind of news drops and we get closer to kind of casting and things i mean if you dropped uh, you know one of those a-list names on the community and lock them in i imagine you'd raise the the budget of the film in taxes in in a week after that so you know it's right. it, once once we're at that stage i think it's smooth sailing to get to the end goal that we need you know to the for the budget, it's these it's these initial it's these initial months and you know these initial twelve months where you have a you know a ravenous community in crypto that wants things they want them now they want them yesterday um, as soon as you deliver something they want another thing yesterday and so that really is the greatest challenge with I've found with um, with launching this is is you know delivering things like uh, okay I've delivered a streaming utility that that is functional, that works, you know, and they go, so what next? And you go, okay, well, I'll, I'll deliver the NFTs, you know, and, they go, and I'll deliver that. And I'll go, okay, so what's next? And I go, all right, I'll deliver the game partnership. And, the, and that's why it's been really important, you know, watching other tokens over the years that have lofty ambitions but didn't either have the resources or the connections to, to do them were then relying on, you know, uh, they're just too too far behind you know you make an announcement you've got to deliver it so you know we've been five months in the making with our gaming partnership we've been you know developing the the film crib streamer for months so that we could release it it's been built so that it can scale already you know and that was part of the part of it as well as that we scale that so it can be not only just a streamer, but an information hub for filmmakers um, where they can come, they can see live streaming Q&As with established filmmakers. You can share um, community projects. You can have uh, apps that are on there that you can use for visual effects and things like that. So it's a whole ecosystem that we build out. And one of the other important things of a crypto community is to how, how do you reach people outside of crypto? How do you bring them into the fold? Because you need you need that kind of growth. And so... That's why, you know, we wanted to target emerging filmmakers as well. It's a younger de demographic. It's one that's more likely to 
understand or not be afraid of crypto. I mean, I'm 40 plus and I'm an, I'm an anomaly, you know. People, I talk to people my age that are filmmakers like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, so it's about yeah. targeting that younger demographic and then them being rewarded for putting their films on. And so that engagement and the cyclical nature of, of how that ecosystem works with rewarding the filmmakers, rewarding the community, we then sell advertising space on that uh, platform, which yeah. generates revenue to buy back the chart. And, you know, so everything's well well considered and well thought out um, a lot in advance. And so that's, but even then, you know, you have weeks where you can't deliver something every week. So the chart's going to go up and down. It's just, you know, natural the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> Which you know, but it doesn't stop your ravenous uh, communities from going when, 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 and so that's really you know about you know having a good team of mods and a good team there that can temper people's expectations, and you just get on with delivering utility because that's what's going to drive the longevity of a project in the end of the day. For sure, and I you know I think that um, a lot of you know buying uh, NFTs or buying you know a token, um, what you're really doing is you know you're you're, you're placing a bet on retrogression, right? You're, you're placing yep. a bet on, on the ecosystem, on the franchise, and, and what it's going to be. And if you feel strongly about it, you know, if you feel strongly about, you know, um, the way that the film is being created, the way that the film is being financed, um, you know, it just, it's hard. Like you said, it's hard to be patient because this stuff doesn't <laughs> get built overnight, right? That's um, right. Yeah. And that's what they're saying, you know, like, like you, you know, you're, you're talking about the board Apes and you're talking about, you know, all yeah. these other NFTs. Well, you know, what did you buy? Really, what you did is you, you the, the theory is that you're buying into uh, a startup, you know, yeah. Board Apes is a startup now. They're, they're, they're become, they've become a media franchise. They're, they've, they've developed all these other deals. They're creating their own metaverse. And so that stuff takes time, though. Um, and sometimes you maybe you might not have a cool PFP, you know, NFT to show off, but um, there's a lot going on there. For sure. Yeah, that's right. It's just about being active in the community and making sure that you're honest about things as well. You know, there's a lot of yeah. projects that don't communicate or don't have the, um, you know, don't invest in in those channels, you know, and in, in staying in touch with your community. So, you know, there's keeping the community. I mean, the thing about crypto is that there are always going to be people that get caught at the top because people like chasing green candles. And so there's yep. always going to be fun in your channels because there's always going to be people that are down when, you know, they chase the top. So, you know, it's it's something that, you know, concerned me at the beginning. But as uh, as I kind of go through this this project more, you just got to get your head out of that noise and actually yep. just concentrate on delivering what you got to deliver, you know. Yep. So, and I want to be clear. Right now you can actually – you can buy the retrogression token on Uniswap, right? Yeah. I mean, you can, yeah, that's you know, right. You know, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there. Yeah, we had a um, we had a private round of about uh, I think ninety two ETH we raised for the private round, and then we did we launched with an official security partnership on Unicrypt, and and uh, part of that was is there was a heavy vetting uh, process that we had to do with them. Um, we had to you know obviously audit our contract with, with Solid Proof who they recommended, and so I wanted an official uh, partnership rather than just launching on their launch pad because it just meant that we had to be put through the ringer a lot more, and it, it's just better for the community and for them to know that we had to go through that process. Um, and so they were really helpful, and it gives us access to a lot of things like vet, uh, staking, which is we've already got live as well on the Unicrypt platform, and a lot of people are doing that. It's holding a nice floor for us, which is fantastic. Um, so that's available. And, um, yeah, so we did a, a, a pre-sale on there, which was a 200 ETH hard cap that we hit, which nice. was great. Um, yeah. And we put a, a 180 of that ETH or, you know, 90% of that into liquidity. So we've got very strong liquidity pool, which is fantastic, and that's locked yeah. for 12 months. And so we've done all the right things, you know, essentially to, to make this a kind of safe uh, project for, for investors, which is great. So um, right now, if somebody wants to get involved right now, like with with the the film, the the best way to kind of invest yourself in it, right, is is basically buying that token, right? Being able to go out there and yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's in it's in its first it's in its first dip after launch now, uh, and we're about to uh, kick off the treasure hunt, the NFT treasure hunt leading up to that, and we've developed probably ninety percent of those NFTs already, and they look they're pretty amazing stuff. There's different ones. There's anime style, and there's more cartoon style. But then there's also 3D rendering and based on characters of the film and the worlds and 
props and things like that. And so there's yeah. going to be a really great collection there. So we're about to launch that at the end of the week. So it's actually, you know, not financial advice, but probably a, a good time is around now to, to um, jump in while it's, you know, while the chart's in its first dip and probably about to go up again. But, yeah, that's the way to support the community now. You can then stake your tokens and, you know, on the staking platform already. Um, and part of the tax that we charge, the buy-sell tax, um, goes towards the film crib as well to pay out to the community and to the um and to the uh, to the filmmakers, so that's you know it's all it's all hand in hand. We need a self sustainable utility that doesn't draw too much on our total supply that's left right. as well. So um, yeah, it's a well enge well engineered tokenomics for it. Yeah, that, that, that sounds great. Um, could you take me through the the, the steps of what's going to be released? Do you anticipate the the video game being released first, and then the film, um, or or the the film, and then and then and then the video game? And how are the two interrelated? I'm wondering if, if somehow, like you know, as you're developing the video game, you get this idea for the film, or it doesn't work that way, uh, or the you know everything's yeah. already set. Um, how are the two kind of going to play off of each other? Um, and and what yeah. do you anticipate coming out first? Yeah, it's a really it's a it's a good question. It's a fun question because um, it'll be the game first, no doubt about it. And the game, you know, that partnership and being on that metaverse and bringing these communities together will be an important part of generating the revenue to, to make the film, you know. Um, so the film is the end goal. The film in terms of, you know, we've got a budget, that script, and we're going to know exactly what that is. So that's essentially set in stone what the film is. Um, but the game, the game is where the fun comes because I look at it in um, very similarly to, say, the Star Wars uh, franchise, where you've got your Star Wars film, which does its thing, but then you've got a Boba Fett series and you've got uh, a Mandalorian series and you've got a yeah. this and a that and it's a cartoon and it's a thing. It's this whole world, you know, of, of merchandising and other projects where you take specific things from the main film. And then you yeah. explore all these different avenues. And so the way we're approaching the game is similar to that, where we will start off with the main character of the film, which is Ben Hammond, and he'll start taking you through that game. The game will be an experiential Unreal Engine version. So we will continue to be able to create worlds as we go along and then link up with other characters that are in the film, but then go off into those other characters' worlds to give you a deeper relationship to the backstories of the of the thing so you won't have an identical road to the film it'll be a much more interesting immersive thing and this is where it opens it up to the community as well where we're able to on the back end you know and by engaging the community directly work out what things interest them in this world and what characters interest them and then put those resources into developing things in that game experience that focus on the things that are popular which is fantastic yeah. you know and so it's a it's yeah. a moving feast the game and that's that's why I love it because, you you know, you could meet the old Oracle woman and then people go, I love the Oracle woman. And you go, okay, well, let's go into her world and let's discover her world. And so there are so many tentacles that you can, that you can do. And that then relates to NFTs as well, because it's a, it's a play to earn NFT based experience. And that opens up the avenues for, okay, so maybe the Oracle NFTs are the things the community are more interested in. So let's go down that path and explore those. So, while the yeah. film is kind of its own beast and it's the backbone of the of the whole ecosystem, it's uh, the fun part is in, is is exploring the the world beneath that and enriching that experience in terms of storytelling. It's it sounds it definitely sounds like it, and um, the, the, I guess the, you mentioned before creating a DAO like a film DAO, right? And having this community yeah. involved and having the input, and so like the video game really seems like the way that that the community is going to have that input and. Maybe to some extent, right? Like, if it's going to be a, uh, a trilogy, maybe the the film community can have a little bit more input, right? If you know, if that exactly. second or third film, you know, exactly. Um, yeah, the first script's yeah. written, but the other two aren't, and so yeah, we can involve the community quite heavily in those in those other two films. Um, and then also after we make those three films, is the plan is to make it a, a Dow Studio. So. You know, I'll be able to bring projects to the to the community. It could be a one million dollar horror film. It could be a another sci fi film. It could be a slasher film. It could be whatever. It could be a drama, and bring these heavily vet these filmmakers. Bring them to the community, and the community gets to decide what the taxes are spent on next, in terms of uh, what movie they want to see, and vote on it. And 
you know, rather than me handing over that money to these filmmakers, we will hold on to it and produce the movie ourselves. So we're always in control of the community's finances and making sure that it's done properly, but they get to choose what what is made. And that opens it up because then, as you know, we're starting with a short film emerging uh, filmmakers platform, streaming platform, but as we go through and we make our movies and we put our our sci-fi movies on this streamer with the capability to to be able to stream those, then as we engage with those young filmmakers along that path and then they bring us projects, then this is just building itself in the long term to an independent film streamer as well. So yeah. th- th- it's an ecosystem that runs concurrently, you know, that organically grows together. The communities grow together and, and, and you know, community as we go along have more say in what we make and we're bringing the filmmakers to the table. So we're bringing the projects to the table. So that's exciting, you know, once we, we get our films done that it's, yeah. it's open slather. It's awesome. So, I mean, uh, two things come in mind, Anthony. Thank you again for, for the time. Um, and I, I just had a couple more kind of comments, questions um, is that it seems like you have way more flexibility this way, right? You have way more um, leeway and, and, and kind of a way to be more creative um, yeah. by involving the community. And then I guess the, the second part of that, you know, comment or, or kind of thing that I noticed is um, that how do you, how do you want this kind of project, the, you know, retrogression and, and how it evolves, can it serve as a model for you know other filmmakers um is that kind of something that you want to put out there so that other people can follow your lead and you know how likely is it that you can kind of completely separate from that you know traditional finance model that you know is currently inhibiting some films from being made yeah i mean that you know the the fire in my belly is about you know the creative things aside which i love and i love diving into the creative things the fire in my belly is about putting the power and and the the fiscal returns back into the hands of creatives because we see it in the movie movie industry we see it in the music industry we see it with artists it's just it's an unfair system that has been around since the dawn of time you know artists artists who can paint a picture you know it used to be that you'd sell that picture and then you might sell it for five grand and it becomes huge or you become huge and then there's transactions outside of that that could go up to a hundred million dollars but they're not rewarded for it and it's just it's just an right. exchange between wealthy people whereas bringing nfts to the to the thing and this is what blew my mind with nfts the first time I was like how fantastic that the guy that created that now has a royalty built in on the blockchain for eternity and every time that thing is bought and sold he gets rewarded for his work i just thought that was amazing it was just something that was needed kanye west has come out you know um in recent times and and posted pictures of his you know his deals in the music industry and he's a multi-millionaire you know but just how much is in favor of the of the money people and not the creatives and then has gone out of his way to release an album on a on a little device that he's created so he can go direct to to the to his audience you know radiohead did it in the uk where they did a pay what you want on our website for their for their album People and artists in in film and in and in music and have been really trying to find a way through so that they can cut out all these middlemen and they can get direct to their audience. And so the fire in my belly for this project is to be, uh, you know, the leader in the film industry for this because, as I said earlier, it's always been an afterthought for people. It's always been, well, how do I make money off NFTs now that I made the film? That's not the way to go about it. The way to go about it is to create. A community and an ecosystem from the beginning and so that's what i want to happen i want to be the enemy of the studios you know i want to be i, I want to be that guy i want them to kind of go holy shit that you, that you don't have to rely on us anymore you know i want to be an enemy of all the middlemen i want to go there is a way that filmmakers can profit from their movie there is a way that those profits can be shared amongst the community that help them to realize this dream and so the, the the profit is going where it should. The power is where it should. The creative decisions are where it should. And, you know, I see in the film industry a lot of creative potential all the time. And, you know, TV and film, that just gets quashed because there are money people involved. And whether that's rewriting the script for whatever reason or someone goes, I mean, for instance, there was one, you know, we were doing gold and you've you've seen this movie right and it's zach efron like you've never seen him before and he's got a beard and he looks terrible and it's you know that's the whole whole idea Mm -hmm. of it right and one of the deals that was 
put in front of us um, from a sales agent was like, great, we'll take it. We'll give you X amount of million and uh, he's got to be clean shaven. And, <laughs> you know, these are the kind of things that may seem, you know, for me, that was a big deal, you know. I was just like, are you kidding me? This is the whole point of it. The whole creative thing is that. And the whole thing for Zach is I want to do something different. And so there's a whole lot of kind of things that are so trivial that can get in the way of a deal. And I want to get rid of those as well. You know, I want to be able to give give creative freedom back to, to creatives. And, you know, generally that's a better place to be. So that's my fire. And I think I think we can do it. And I think... Once we once this works and once we finance a film and once we integrate the game and once um, we do it, I, I, it's going to pave the way for a lot of filmmakers. You know, a lot of filmmakers don't understand it, but I think once it's been made in practice, then a lot of people will flock to this and go, here's my project. I'm coming to you because you're going to give right. me creative freedom and, you know, um, and other people are going to be looking at ways of doing it. But you know, I'm not a greedy person. I like to, you know, I'm not a CEO of a studio or a company. I just want my freedoms. I just want to be able to create something. I just want to be duly rewarded. I want to share that with the people that help me do it. That's that's my mindset. And, you know, call me a communist, I guess. But <laughs> it's just, you know, <laughs> it's just like, it's, um, you know, I just, I just think that that's a great way. And so yeah. uh, that's what I hope to achieve from it. That, you know, what, when you talk about that, you know, you really are talking about the ethos of, you know, decentralized finance, right? Um, That's right. We're talking about, you know, Bitcoin and, and you know, kind of this idea of, you know, t- being in control of your money and, you know, and, and being able to, yeah, and, and being able to kind of do with it whatever you want and being creative as well. You know, these other blockchains that have come along and that have different use cases. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's almost like, um, you know, your films, your... your it's almost like you're you're embodying right the the currency. It's crazy. It's like the currency has taken a life of its own, and it's kind of That's taken right. uh, taken you know people to action because now it's like they're they're emboldened by it. They're like there is an alternative right to um, That's right. these people that have power now. Now let's see if we can how how much we can shift this. I don't know. It's just quite, really interesting. Really interesting. Yeah, that and that is it. I mean that that was you know a lot of it too. Is the very ethos ethos of crypto currency is at the heart of the is at the heart of the film script is at the heart of the ecosystem um you know and it's at the core of my heart as well so i'm a very passionate human being i'm surprised how little i've sworn during this uh this podcast (laughs) (laughs) uh, there it is um but uh you know i mean the you know the good thing about it and i've got you know teams of guys behind me with equals amounts of passion you know i'm not i'm not going anywhere this is you know, I, I've made two films. I've made a film where I've had to hand over everything to people. It's not happening again. So, you know, I'm making this work one way or another. So, you know, to have a community there with me for the ride. And then there's just cool stuff, you know, like there's just, you know, part of our uh, our NFT thing is that some people, if you buy this and hold this NFT, you get an executive producer credit in the film. So whoever's holding it at the time, you know, gets that. There's visits to the set, you know, there's... <laughs> Once we start going through that whole process, we then document everything and put it on our streamer and people get to follow the process. And um, so, you know, a very very visual representation of the creation of, you know, of a film as well. And so hopefully, you know, because one of the biggest kicks I get as as someone in the film industry is to be able to see something go from a, a seedling idea all the way through to the end product and to see that happen and to be part of that is amazing and so i hope that the community are able to yeah. be part of that as well that they feel a sense of ownership of it because they truly do own it you know um yeah. and then they're able to go through the highs and lows with us and eventually see this thing on the screen and go wow we did that that's yeah that's super cool you know uh man that, that that's that's perfect man that's a perfect way to maybe kind of kind of for the for now, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. Talk about retrogression. There, there's so much more to talk about. Um. So, uh, I, I mentioned before. I mean, how can people get involved? You know, people. Uh, you know, let's say someone's listening and they're like, "What is this whole retrogression about?" Uh, they want to learn more about the film. Um, they want to. Yeah. They want to be part of the community. Um, and I know we mentioned before, you can you can go out and, and kind of become a, a part owner almost of of the film, yeah, of the franchise by buying some of the token. Um, how else can they get involved? How can they, you know, um, how can they get in, uh, you know, talk to others, 
How can they en- be engaged yeah. and, and engage others? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, join our social networks. You know, we've got the Twitter, the Instagram, the um, the TG, the Discord, all that kind of stuff. You know, that's where a lot of our information, daily information comes to. You can buy the token, which essentially, you know, um, is, is an ownership in everything we do really you can watch the films on the crib and engage there that then drives advertising revenue which then we use to buy back the chart and support the whole community can you know there's can i talk about that real quick i yeah, watch a yeah. couple of those films man they're awesome and i love those oh, shorts yeah. the, absolutely yeah, yeah. They made, someone made me cry man i was like oh man they're they're fantastic i mean they're like you said some of them are, are oscar nominated I, you know yeah that's right yeah, yeah and yeah. we've got a whole new We've just secured another, I think, another 10 Oscar-winning and Oscar-nominated films and uh, a bunch of uh, award-winning animations. So, you know, we're expanding that platform all the time and, um, you know, to keep content rolling over and we'll open it up so that filmmakers can upload their their content as well. So there'll always be a curated section where we're bringing the best quality from around the world to the one platform. And then it'll also be, you know, the the community be able to upload their content as well and share it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can, you can engage in all those ways. We wanted to make an ecosystem that was also entertaining to be part of as well. You know, that was part of the thing. You can buy the token, but you can watch the movies, you can engage with them, or you can, you know, you can play the game. Um, you can do the NFT hunt that we're about to start, which is a very yeah. cryptic uh, NFT treasure hunt that takes you all around the internet while still educating you on the story and the characters of the film and the, and, you know, there's NFT prizes that you, you earn. And uh, eventually once you get to the end, then there's a surprise there for everyone. And that'll be, the beginning of our launch of our NFTs. Um, so you can be part of that. I mean, we're also, also always looking for partnerships as well. You know, partnerships is important with other with other communities to bring communities together. And so the gaming partnership was, a, was an important one for us. Um, you know, uh, an NFT minting partnership could work for us still with limited time. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we're always looking for ways to, to integrate with other with other projects that complement each other as well. So, you know, feel free to get on our socials and reach out if, you, if you're if you another token as well and you see a good fit. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Anthony, thank you so much for, you know, spending time with, with us, with alts, uh, and talking about retrogression, talking about gold. I don't I don't know whether, whether to come out with this at the beginning or at the end, but um, uh, your, your, your acting in gold, man, your character freaked me out. So, uh, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> and, and so and so talking to you right now i just wanted to let you know that man talking to you is like wow like uh, unbelievable how you how you get into character like that and uh just uh it was, it was fantastic man um just want to throw that put that there that's probably um, the best compliment you could give an actor just to say that they're <laughs> very different to the asshole that's on screen <laughs> yeah, that's right but yeah um so it really comes out um thanks again for for coming out uh we're looking forward to 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 seeing how retrogression uh, progresses. There's so much in here uh, that you talked about, uh, really important stuff, really, because, I mean, you're talking about changing the way a behemoth of an industry is, is created, it, it, how, you know, how business as usual isn't working, right? And you're trying to That's change right. that. So I um, really, really appreciate you talking about that and being open about it. Um, thanks so much. I mean, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. Thanks for Absolutely. having me and thanks to the, your community for, for tuning in too. Thank you. Yeah, and I wish the fun had been here. Um, you're just gonna have to listen in after, you know, later on. <laughs> uh, we can do this again with both of you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Danny. Have a good night. Yep. Yeah, you too. Thank you. There's so much to unpack with what Anthony just said. Not only is he endeavoring to start up an entire movie franchise through the blockchain, but he's looking to change the core of the movie industry's financial models. Anthony's ambition with retrogression as a movie, metaverse, NFT, and the platform for independent directors is staggering. But who better to start a new model than someone who is passionate about their craft and who has been burned by the powers that be? I want to thank Anthony for joining the podcast. I recommend you check out his latest movie, Gold, which he co-wrote, produced, directed, and starred in. And I'd like to thank you for spending part of your day with Alts. If you enjoyed listening to the podcast, let others know about it or leave a review or a comment. Until the next episode, take care.